Good morning, I'm John Ellsworth with Success Strategies. I'm the founder of Success Strategies Incorporated, the creator of the Success Strategies Advantage, and now the Success Strategies Business Navigator program. And I wanna to talk to you about a blog that I've written recently entitled, Knowing Your Next Step. Now the last blog and video that I did uh, several weeks ago, uh, we talked about um, three, three items that uh, motivational speaker Brendan Bouchard outlined uh, that he felt was necessary for 2020. You remember those that were called the three A's? And that, those three A's stood for, number one, ambition, your ambition level in what you're trying to achieve this year. Uh, number two, your actions. And he was referring to daily actions that you and I take to move forward in our business. And number three, our attitude. And remember, as I suggested Zig Ziglar had pointed out in the past, oftentimes our attitude determines our altitude or our achievement level, if you will. Um, and then we talked about six musts. Six items that just have to happen in 2020. And if you want to hear those again, I'm not going to go through them right now, but if you'd like to go back, you can, you can go back to that prior video and listen to them again. I would suggest you do that. But Brendan talks about a big one entitled committing to mastery. So what does that mean for dairies? For a dairy operation, what does that really mean? To me, it means all, first of all, all the basics of cow comfort, reproduction, production, feeding, all those basic items are done correctly in a positive manner. But also to achieve mastery, I think we need to go one step beyond those basics and ask questions about our operation, whether it's efficiencies, um, our asset values, our labor uh, situation. And let me give you a few examples of some that I've talked to uh, clients of mine recently. Uh, several of these are fairly recent. Uh, for example, a gentleman who was looking at uh, he's currently milking in a double 16 parallel milk barn, and no problem with that, but we started to question the efficiency. Uh, did he need to go, does that mean he needs to go out and build a new $4 million milk barn? Absolutely not. That would be ludicrous at this point for him. But it's something to think about. Do, what if we change that, converted that to a double 20 parallel barn or a double 24 parallel barn? Uh, the question is, what would the cost be? What would the payback be? What kind of return would we get on that investment? And beyond that, could we milk more cows? If, in fact, that's what he or you would want to do. And every operation is going to be different. But these are the kind of questions we need to um, process and go through, I think, to reach a level of mastery. On the other hand, could he milk the same number of cows in less time? How about with less labor? Oh, wait a minute. What about less overtime or no overtime pay? Wouldn't that be a plus to his bottom line? Another example might be, do you have too many heifers on your operation? Now, some producers feel that this is a real, I call it a security blanket. Uh, well, they say, you know, I, if I have these heifers, I can always sell them and get money as needed. But you have to be careful on the loan to value considerations of that process. Uh, in other words, if you sell them and you don't pay down to your herd loan uh, or feed line or whatever loans you have on your operation, you could get out of sync with that because you have fewer assets, right? So the loan to value is naturally going to go up if you don't pay down the feed line um, or the herd loan, excuse me. Uh, but so yes, you can sell them and generate some funds. But why not just maintain the numbers that you need? And as a result, you can decrease your outgoing fee costs. Uh, you can decrease your overall managerial costs, perhaps in the area of labor, particularly and some other items. Uh, perhaps you could increase your cash on hand from operations. And that was the intent of keeping them to convert them to cash anyway, right? So I'm just thinking that there's possibility that we could lower feed and labor costs, managerial costs, if you will, and um, maybe just in increase the amount of cash we have on hand from operations by not having too many heifers on hand. And we'll talk about this another time, but that's just an example of another question on dairies 
in dairy operations that I think is part of achieving mastery. Asking questions like that. How about number three, labor efficiency? Uh, you say, well, gee, John, uh, labor is tight. Well, wait a minute. I'm not saying hire more labor. I'm saying maybe you'll need less or maybe possibly less, or maybe we just have the same number, but by boosting efficiencies, we just become more profitable. We get more things done. The cow comfort gets better, whatever item you want to talk about. The point of this whole discussion for you is this. The future of the dairy industry lies with the most efficient producers. We had 60,000 dairies approximately in 1999, 20 years ago. Uh, today we have about 40,000. The trend is not encouraging in the overall sense, but particularly um, it, there's a message there in terms of efficiency. And uh, what I'd suggest you do in 2020 is work toward this level of mastery that Brendan Burchard talks about. Your success and perhaps even survival in this industry is going to depend on this. If I can help you with this, uh, you can check out our website, which is right above my head in the video behind me. Uh, and so, or you can email me at john at success-strategies.com. I will be happy to help you. In fact, I'd be excited to help you. Again, I'm John Ellsworth, uh, founder of Success Strategies Incorporated, the creator of the Success Strategies Advantage and the new Business Navigator program. And I want to wish you the best of success this year. Thank you very much.